Wow, hey guys, good morning. How you doing? Hey, uh, yesterday, man, I tell you what, it was hot yesterday, and uh, we had to go into the trailer today because uh, the shop man ran out of hot water. So, in that trailer, man, I tell you what, man, that if even though we got AC, it was still hot. So, I was really, we was really tired. So I came back in, put these meat on at six thirty. And soon after that, man, I went to bed. I was so tired. Yeah, but today the pit, man, is running at 225. I think the highest has been about 240. So it's been hovering between 225 and 240. You know, man, I was so tired, man. I didn't even put my briskets in the pan. I just, I just put them straight on the racks. Okay, but I just let it, I just let the pit flow. So I left this wide open, um, throughout the whole cook, and I didn't even adjust my valve. I just kept it wide open and used my meter blocks, you know, to uh, to monitor the temp. You know, so let's look at this thing. All right. All right. So I'll tell you what, it's been, it's almost four o'clock. What time is it? Four? Yeah, four o'clock. So I put these on, I'm telling you, right at 630. And that was it. 630. So what? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. Man, it's been almost 10 hours. Since I got into this pit. Okay, and I still got a, it's a pretty even cook. All right, pretty even cook. You know, I'm wrapping all this stuff up. I'm I'm good. This can go a little bit darker, but I'm done. These are sitting at 155, 160. Okay. Let's, let's check out this out. I didn't rotate, you know, I didn't even spritz this thing. I don't spritz. Let it base itself. So this is 10 hours, bro. 10 hour cook. So I did a long cook last night. I was just, just too tired. Cause usually I put my meat on at nine o'clock and uh, I just let it roll around 2.25. And then uh, picnics, okay. picnics, uh, had them in the pans already. So these are, I'm getting ready to wrap these up too. And uh, to get my picnics done, what I usually do, guys, I just I split them down to the bone to actually butterfly them. All right, so that way I can get done faster. Oh, but yeah, these are okay, nice color. So we ran a long cook, very long, because usually I like to get my stuff done probably about you no know, about six or seven hours. But this is a ten-hour cook at two twenty. 225, no higher than 235. But my meter block said it ran 224 hours. All right, let's check out the uh, the firebox because I'm going to wrap these up. Okay. But what I used, I used these B&B charcoal. And first time I'm using those. And it seemed like it did pretty good. Okay, let's check it out. Let's check it out. Uh, let's see what we got. Come on, baby. All right. Not bad at all. So this was the residue charcoal that I had from a previous cook. Okay. Which about right here is where the residue was. So I don't throw my residue away. And then uh, the rest of the stuff still looks good. Look at I can, You can still see the bee in some of these. You still see the B, and I still got a lot left over. And I'm getting ready to, let's see what we got over here. So that's pretty much gone. Let's turn off the lights so we get a better look. Okay, yeah. That is pretty good for a 10 hour cook. That's pretty good for a 10 hour cook. You know, I still got another two hours left on my cook to be done, you know, but that will get me done. That This will push me over. Because Kingsford, I will have to uh, reload, probably reload some of this, especially after 10 hours. But I'm going to leave that alone. That's that's fine. So this b and the b and B, uh, matter of fact, let me just look at it. So you can see how big this stuff is. Good morning, Leroy. So this stuff is big. Look at that. Okay. 
if I would get Kingsford or something else, it would probably be let, way less than this. So that actually lasted a long time. That's pretty big. So go less. I was going to use my char logs, but I already had this firebox pre-set up a couple of days ago. So uh, I probably tried to char logs. I used char logs one time on this stuff, and it did good. Actually, it did better than the BNB. Even though they're both from BNB, but the char logs are so dense that I would probably go way less than uh, this if I'm using char logs. Probably half of this. Okay. But yesterday I did preheat. Okay. I did preheat my pit. Push this back in. That's uh, about maybe 200 degrees. And then I threw this meat in. What are what are your thoughts on the trawl trawl grill 960? Um, man, don't waste your money. Don't waste your money on that on that because the, the it's almost like sheet metal. So if you know char logs and you know the material, you know you know how flimsy it is, and sometimes you got to do some modifications to char, uh, to char char grills so i don't like to do no mods yeah you know, you're just gonna shoot yourself in the foot just go ahead and purchase something that's gonna last you know a long time get that heavy duty steel that will last you for years because usually char grills man they probably last what two years probably after a year they start to you know rust rust over invest in something really good but i know some people they like it uh they have it but I know I had a couple of char logs, I mean char, char grills over the years, and I tell you what, I don't have them no more. Okay, they they just don't last, especially the way I cook. Right? So you can look at this vote. I had this vote just over three years, going on four years, and it still looks, you know, I won't say brand new, but it, it's it holds up. It holds up the heat. So invest in something that's gonna if you're gonna make it a business, yeah. Or the battle, yeah, the battle box. Um, the long weekender is good too because it can hold a little bit more meat. But if you can get a, uh, if you can get if you can get the battle box, you won't be disappointed. All right, guys, let's see. So the meaty block did good. Uh, we're getting ready to go ahead and wrap all this stuff up. Put a, put the uh, my briskets back in the pans, which I have right there. Put probably. A cup of water in there and wrap them up and put them back on. All right, guys, got to go. Hey, God bless. Matter of fact, let's see. Let's see what I can do. Let me see if I can do it with my pit maker gloves. Let's put this on. We'll put one in here so you guys can actually see. I can do it with one hand. Let's check this out. If you guys ever get a chance, oh, sorry about all the movement, guys. Get some of these pick maker gloves. These things are flexible, you know, they're uh, they heat resistant. Let's see. I bet not drop this thing. I bet not. Look at that. That's nice. It's a big one, too, guys. That's a big sucker. Bam. And that's all I do. Put them in the pan. And I put maybe a cup of water in there. And then wrap it up. And then uh, finish it off. That's a 10 hour brisket. Alright guys. Hey, you got to go. God bless y'all. And uh, Leroy, if you want to hit me up, give me a call. Or instant message. And then we can talk more on about on the, uh, the battle box of the long weekender. Alright guys. God bless.